Hello everyone, welcome to Day Trader Next Door. Today I'm going to talk about all the ins and outs of using a 4K TV as a computer monitor and why I think it's the way to go now for traders, audio engineers, anybody who just wants a whole lot of real estate and doesn't need super, super fast response time or perfect color reference display, that sort of thing. To me, this is the way to go. Now, I did a video, my very first video, I think, actually, first or second, so it's old. It was about this setup. The setup's been tweaked a little bit since then, but let's just go over what we're seeing here. Now, these are 55-inch 4K quantum dot high sense televisions. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to find out what television's going to work for you, because not all TVs work great. I went through a few before I figured it out. The good thing is, in the last couple of years, Technology has moved forward a little bit, and it's really quite easy to find one that'll work for a really good price. But let's just look at what I've got on the screen here first. You'll see on the bottom, I've got two screens. These are the same size as a 27-inch 1080 monitor. Same size, same resolution, and same pixel size. On the top, I'm split into three screens. And the, what these work out to is a 21-inch square screen, like the old monitors. I find it really handy for being able to fit multiple charts on here that I don't need to see way back on. Even today, a lot of people are using 21, 22 inch monitors in arrays for trading. Now on the other side, I have it split up even more into four monitors across on the top and still two 27s on the bottom. Now by comparison, my old rig had six 27 inch monitors on a big stand. I've gotten rid of all of them now, except for this one that I keep up here. I put CNBC on here or YouTube or something if I want to just watch a bit of video while I'm trading the markets. Now, when I had this set up, I had six power cables, six video cords, and a real nightmare of a cable situation. These aren't good monitors either. They're, they're kind of crappy, and they've got wide bezels on them, but it is what it is. And the thing is now, you can buy one of these exact TVs for about the same price as two of these and two HDMI cables. It's an absolute no-brainer. The same as four of those screens, one power cable, one video cable. One stand that's much less expensive and much more ergonomic than the great big six-way stand. It's just always going out of alignment and so heavy and not very stable. It was just a nightmare. The screen quality, the whites are brighter, the blacks are darker, the colors are more pleasing, on the TV. Now we're not talking about a 1080 TV. If you take this and try and put it on a 1080 screen, it's going to be all blurry. But what you're actually getting is the same pixel for pixel on this in each one of these little screens as you're seeing on an actual 27 inch monitor. It is every bit as clear. In my case, it's clearer and more defined. The other question I get sometimes is eye fatigue. I find I have issues with eye fatigue. It's gotten better since I've moved to the TV system than it was when I had those monitors. I think a big part of it is the blacks are black on this for a reason that I'm going to get into shortly. Another question that gets about screen burn. I've had almost three years on this setup so far and there is no screen burn. I can take everything off and turn it to the black screen and there's absolutely zero screen burn. And you know, if I ever want to upgrade to a different screen, I won't have a problem finding a home for these two 4K TVs. We've got kids, we've got friends, no problem. It's a lot different when you're trying to get rid of like five computer monitors that you've lost the stand, the original stand for that nobody wants. Now, as far as choosing a TV, it's gotten a lot easier since I first put this system together. There's a few things you need to know. First of all, you need a TV that is HDMI 2.0 capable. That is pretty much everything right now, except for maybe like an RCA or a Westinghouse or some kind of a brand like that. Pretty much everything is now HDMI 2.0 capable. We're going to talk a bit more about that later, but the, the main thing with that is refresh rate. You can have a 4K TV with HDMI 1.4. You will see a 4K screen. You can watch a 4K movie or something like that. You can watch 4K on YouTube, but it will be at 24 or 30 hertz, not at 60. That's fine for watching video. Most video is one of those two refresh rates anyway. But when you're using it as a computer monitor, it is not nice. It's almost like the old days when you had like Windows 95 and you had mouse trails turned on. It's just no good. It's no good as a computer monitor. Fine for watching video, not for doing this. Another thing is you want a bright screen with local dimming. You can find that easily in the specs. Local dimming is huge. What that means is instead of the entire backlight being on all the time and the pixels just being turned on or off, 
it has a whole bunch of little zones so that when you have dark sections, it actually turns the light off behind that section. It makes it much easier on the eyes, makes the blacks much darker. Now, OLED TVs are even better because each individual pixel provides the light too. So that if you find one of those, then that's even better, but they're gonna be much more expensive than something like this. Now, what's gonna work? Pretty much anything that's HDR capable. Now, these screens are not HDR, but just about anything that is HDR is going to be HDMI 2.0. It's most likely going to have local dimming, but you wanna read through that in the specs. Now, this particular TV, I've got a link for down in the description on Amazon. However, I will tell you that Walmart has a much better price on this exact same TV. It's like $370 as of the time of this video. These particular TVs are a Hisense Quantum Dot Android TV. A couple years old now, it's been working for over two years absolutely flawlessly. Now, one thing you're probably gonna to wanna to do if you're using it as a computer monitor is to actually buy a stand for it. Just a single desk stand. I have one of them down there, the one that I use, and it's essentially just a nice, heavy, thick desktop stand. You screw into the back of the TV, it allows you to swivel it, and uh, it doesn't have those two funky feet. Like most of these TVs have two little offset feet on either end, and it's just, it's quite awkward. Plus it's really low to the desk. This lets you get it up higher off the desk, lets you swivel it easier. Just much nicer angle for using as a monitor. Now the next thing you gotta consider is a video card. This is really important and it's really easy to go astray. Something you wanna consider if you wanna think about adding more screens in the future. But the bottom line in my experience of trying numerous cards, stick with NVIDIA. It does not have to be a high-end NVIDIA. I used a 1050 Ti for a long time on this, actually a small form factor. You can get the large one if you have a regular size computer. I had originally had a small form factor computer and I needed the small one. It worked flawlessly. With these two 4K displays plus the 1080 display up there, it could run the entire thing, even playing video on it, and only be 25-30% uh, processing. Like, very good, stayed nice and cool, runs smooth as butter. One thing to watch out for though, there's a company named Vision Tech and they make actually really cool graphics cards with multiple outputs, like even five and six outs. And they're based on AMD Radeon, uh, older Radeon technology. And they seem like the perfect solution, but they do not work for this kind of a setup. They're more made for commercial signage and something like that. That's just putting a screen on and leaving it and then switching it to another frame. I'm sure it could handle that or it could handle 1080 screens, but I had originally a two gig card. It just couldn't do it. it. It would work, but if you decided to open a video in one of these windows, it would play back like this. It just can't handle it. So stay away from those, get an NVIDIA card. If you need a small form factor computer, get a 1050 Ti. If you have a larger, like a regular size computer that can fit a full size card. You can get a 1650. Just be careful which 1650 you get if you want to have a possibility of using three monitors because not all of them work with three monitors. There's one down in the link down there that does work with three monitors and it's actually less expensive than the 1050 Ti is. So if you have a computer with a regular size case, that's the one that you want. It does give you three outputs. Now I also have a system down there recommended, which is the one that I use. It has onboard graphics that does support 4K. However, you don't want to use it like that. You do want a dedicated graphics card for pretty much anything that comes with integrated graphics, even if it can handle 4K. The reason is this computer has integrated graphics. It does support 4K. It only has an HDMI out. Intel 630 graphics only supports HDMI 1.4 which means that it will drive a one 4K TV, but you'll be getting 24 or 30 Hertz, which is no good for using as a computer. You still need a dedicated graphics card. The good news is they're cheap. They're all starting to come down in price now, and the 1650 as of right now is about 180 bucks, which is quite reasonable. The 1050 Ti and certain 1650s will support three monitors if you want that. I used a 1050 Ti to power these two 4Ks and one 1080 with no issue. The 1650 that handles three monitors will do the same thing too. Again, there's a link down there for one that does. But people ask me how much video RAM do you need? On an NVIDIA card at least, two gigabytes per 4K screen or 
500 megabytes per 1080 screen equivalent. So if you want to run two 4K screens, a 4 gig card is going to do just great. So you want 4 gigs for two screens, 2 gigs for one screen. I expect that Vision Tech card to work fine for the one screen. The problem is if you want to add a second, you got to get a new graphics card. For the difference in price, 40 or $50 right now, just get the NVIDIA card and be done with it. Then you have all kinds of room to expand if you want. Now when it comes to hooking up the screens, you have another issue because pretty much any graphics card is only going to have one HDMI. And with a television, you're only going to have HDMI. So you're going to need DisplayPort if you need more than one. And in fact, if you have a card with DisplayPort, I've had better experience just using the DisplayPort with an adapter. But you need to have the right kind of adapter or it won't work. You need an active DisplayPort to HDMI adapter. Active. It must be active. You can buy cords, cables, that are say they're active HDMI to DisplayPort. They don't work. I've tried two of them. They don't work. You get a little box from Amazon. They're cheap and they work. And I've got a link to the exact ones I use down there. You plug the adapter into your graphics card. You plug your HDMI that goes to your TV into that little box and you're done. If you only have one monitor and you connect it to HDMI, that's fine. But I've found if you have two monitors and you have two DisplayPort, it works better to use them both in DisplayPort. Because if you don't, the odd time when you go to turn the computer on, it won't recognize one of the TVs and you have to unplug the power and plug it back in. That's easily fixed by just using DisplayPort. Now, once you've got it set up, you need to go over your display settings. This is easy with the NVIDIA card, but it is a headache with the Vision Tech or the Radeon. So again, it's another reason why I say probably stick to NVIDIA for ease of use. You want to go ahead and choose your resolution and you want proper UHD 4K, which is 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz. 60 hertz is very important. This will likely happen automatically, but you'll think something's wrong because the text is going to be huge. And that's because Windows recognizes that you're using a 4K display and it figures that it's typical monitor size at 24, 27, something like that. So it scales everything up to 300%, the text. So you'll think that your resolution's off when in fact your resolution is correct, but it's magnifying everything 300%. So what you want to do is go to Zoom and change that from 300%, which will say recommended 300%, change it to 100% and everything will be fine. As far as color settings go, if you have a TV that's 444 capable, Chroma 444, that's great. When you go into the NVIDIA control, you can select 444. What I find works just fine is to just make sure that it's under the RGB profile rather than CMYK or anything else. But really, when I used the NVIDIA card, it just worked from the start, except for the, the zoom, which had to be brought down to 100%. Now, let's talk about when you're setting up your TV itself, the settings on the TV, because these are quite important also. First of all, if it gives you an option on your TV to choose HDMI 1.4 or HDMI 2.0, you need 2.0. Just choose that. The TV will probably figure that out automatically. Anything modern now will. But just in case, check that. Another thing is your picture profile. You may not realize it, but a typical TV does all kinds of stuff to the picture it gets from your satellite or from Blu-ray or whatever that you have plugged into it. It does things to try and make the picture look more pleasing. You don't want it to do anything. You just want it to take what it gets from the computer and splash it up on the screen just like a computer monitor does. Now, most modern TVs now have something like a game mode, which does that. It takes off all processing and just gives you the straight signal. And the idea with that is not only does it keep the colors correct as they are from the computer, but it also speeds up your response time. Even with this TV, the response time, it's excellent for the use of a desktop PC. Now, I'm not a gamer, though I have tried a couple of games on here, like BeamNG Drive and Flight Simulator and stuff, and I couldn't tell that I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this and probably a 144 hertz monitor or anything. It's, it's quite fluid and, and quite quick to respond. Works just fine for somebody using this as a workstation. So you want to choose game mode if they have one, or some TVs have what's called dot by dot. And that just essentially takes pixel by pixel exactly as it comes and puts it on the screen. That's what you want. Dot by dot if you have it, or game mode. Make sure that overscan and things like that are turned off because you want to get the exact full signal that comes from the computer, put it on the screen, unprocessed, unchanged, just the way it comes. 
And another thing to save a little bit of frustration, once you set your TV up, update the firmware, but then disconnect it from Wi-Fi. That way you're not going to have it, you know, randomly update itself, and then when you go and turn the screen on, it pops up to the menu. You don't want the menu. You just want it to come right up to your computer, just like a monitor would. Now, another thing I get asked a lot is, how do I split my screens up like this? And you can do it in Windows 10 and 11, but it's really quite frustrating compared to this. This is a software called UltraView Desktop. And yes, it is a software. It's a one-time license, costs about 100 bucks for a digital license. So that is an extra expense. You can do it with Windows if you want for free, but it's worth every penny. It works extremely well. It lets you customize the shape and size of the monitors in any way you want. Save multiple profiles. I have one like this. This is called Quote Board, where it's got uh, smaller monitors on my right-hand side so that I can have a quote board displayed and I can have my Twitter feed displayed right next to it. And then when I want to edit a video, all I have to do is just click and change it to video editing profile and it immediately makes this all one screen. So it's, and it's only a click. It takes two clicks to do that. It makes it extremely easy. You can easily drag and drop things from one monitor to the other and snap it from one to the other. And you just, you can even click it open and it'll just ask what monitor you want it to. It gives you a little graphics. You can just click which one you want and it appears over there. Or you can drag it. It's not perfect, but it really is a nice software. And it also lets you have taskbars like you would on individual monitors in between the windows. You can turn them on or off. If you don't want them, that's fine. I like having the taskbar. But it's an excellent software reasonable price. It's a lifetime license. I've had it for, you know, three years now. It's working great. Now, it's not all perfect. There are some quirks to a setup like this. So I'm going to tell you some of those. The weirdest one at first is you got to turn your TV on every time you turn your computer on. Uh, it's not like a monitor. It doesn't come on automatically. So you actually have to push the power button or use a remote if you want. And then whenever you're done, it will shut off on its own. But I usually, I usually turn them the monitors off. It's easy for me because it just if you just push it once to turn it on, push it twice to turn it off on these. The other thing is if you don't disconnect from Wi-Fi, sometimes it will update the software. And when you turn the screen on, it goes to your like default menu, to the TV menu type of thing. That takes a couple of clicks to get it back. That's why I say set it so it says computer. So when you push your button and show your inputs, it's clear which one it is. But like I say, if you disconnect from Wi-Fi, that doesn't happen. Another thing that's a little bit funny is you can you can maximize a lot of things within these windows with this software, but if you maximize YouTube, no matter what, it goes full screen. So that's one more little quirk. And some games play maximized within the 1080 monitor, and some of them, if you maximize and full screen them, they will just use up the full screen. Now you can play windowed no problem, and it runs quite smoothly, but that's another little quirk. Now, if you're a diehard gamer and you want to have super high refresh rate and super perfect everything, you're probably going to want a gaming monitor like my kids have. But for somebody like me, who's the odd time going to hop on Flight Simulator, this is perfect. When you weigh everything together, you know, my old setup of six 27-inch monitors is six video cables, two graphics cards, a ginormous, unstable, annoying stand, cables everywhere, the expense of it and the hassle of it, it's, there's just no comparison for a workstation like this. And really, you can have a setup like this for a very good price. And you'll see down there, this whole setup as it stands today, it's not $1,500 anymore because prices have gone up, but it's certainly well under 2000 to have this entire setup compared to what you pay for a trading computer from a trading computer company, you pay that for the tower alone. And if you want to get a 6x27 monitor array, uh, with the video cards that that's going to need, you're going to be more than this entire setup, including the computer. I would never go back. This is the way to go. But if you're still here. A few things to remember. You want a good quality bright screen with local dimming. You want to make sure it's HDMI 2.0 capable. You want to make sure that your HDMI cables are 4K60 capable, HDMI 2.0. And again, I recommend an NVIDIA card. Don't try and do this with onboard graphics, even though it says it handles 4K. It does, but not well, and you'll be looking at those mouse trails. No good. Anyway, guys, I hope this has been helpful. Questions and comments, keep them coming down there. Grab my cheat sheet and newsletter, daytradernextdoor.com if you're a trader. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you again soon.